Hi, this is Lady Let's UK and this is part of my How to Make a Platformer series. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at collectible objects. Uh, now, in a platforming game, collectible objects are used for various reasons. They can be to direct a player on a certain route. So they keep collecting in order to move through the game the way you want them to go. Um, they can be used as um, counters in order to open doors so you need to collect five collectibles before the door will open and they can also be used as scores so the more collectibles you collect the more high the score is so um they can be used in various different ways now um i've made previous tutorials i've used this code a lot um, my older tutorials, um, one of my first ones, I used trigger zones within the collectible objects. Um, I found that that is not the best way. And so I'm going to give you some code that you can transfer to various different objects. Um, it creates a microchip that you can use in, in any collectible that you want. And so let's have a look. Right. Okay. So first things first. Uh, let's collect uh, let's make a collectible object i'm just going to do something very very simple let's give it a color there we go and i'm going to make a little collectible object like that okay and we also need a player to collect it so let's just put blank puppet down let's just make sure they're not connected together <laughs> because uh, that's quite important if they're collected together this is not going to work so they need to be separate objects right uh, now I'm going to put a microchip on our collectible object I'm stamping it on so I'm holding the uh, L1 and then letting it go and stamping it on the object this will mean that everything inside this microchip will relate to this object here I'm now going to put in um, some rotating so in order to get it nicely vertical put grid snap on turn the rotator on I want that to rotate uh, vertically so like that so round and round and round it goes so it looks like a collectible like that there we go it's probably a good idea to have something that's very obvious that is a collectible so there we go got some rotation and now turn the grid off next thing I do is I want to put a tag inside my collectible object and call this collectible now um, this is going to be used in a tr with a trigger zone that's inside the player so let me just go into the player open up his logic and we're going to put in a trigger zone and this is going to be looking for a tag called collectible um, now everything is going to come off this so when this is detected this is going to send a signal so we're going to put in some things that is going to happen when our player walks into uh, this object now the first thing to note is we don't want this object to be solid because we um we don't want the player to try and step on it or step over it or anything like that so we want to make the object non-collidable so we go into the tweak menu of the sculpture itself with l1 and square and then turn off collidable then my player can now walk into this and it's not going to affect my player. He's not going to do any weird things with his legs or arms or head or anything. Right, so there we go. So that's ready to go. Uh, now, when we collect our object, we want it to vanish. So we're going to put in a destroyer. Link that up to the power. Um, I also want to be able to count um, how many of these I've collected so i'm going to put in a variable this is not going in the microchip do not put this into the microchip or the player have it as a separate thing you can go put it in its own microchip but yeah uh, you can't put it inside this or the player all right we're going to call this variable counter 
starts at a zero and this one is going to add one so I went L1 and square on that to pull up that so that I can put in the number one and I'm looking for counter so push down on the d-pad until you get the correct variable name there we go and that links up to the power on that so now we've got a counter and it's also destroyed now we want some special effects so I'm going to go into uh, special effects it's already ready ready because I've looked it up earlier and I'm going to pick sparks I'm just going to place that down make sure that's not connected to anything just place that down and I'm going to use an emitter and this emitter um, I'm going to uh, have no emit speed uh, no time between emits it's going to emit once the object's going to last 0.2 seconds and we're going to have these both set to maximum so then all I need to do is click on the special effect and then move it into position onto the cube like so you need to move it so it is the correct for the collectible that will do and then we wire that oops close that up and then we wire that to the power and i also want a sound effect so i'm going to go into sound mode sound effects i'm picking twiz you'll have a look at i've already looked this up so it's nice and easy you don't need to see me looking there we go so that is everything you need to collect an object let's let's see that in action there we go now let's have a look at the trigger zone that trigger zone is enormous and so he, before he gets on top of it um, he's already collecting that up so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the style of this to a cylinder and I'm going to create like a, a hit zone around the player and get it in the right place I'm not in the right place am I there we go whoops Better. I think it's a little smaller. There we go. So now the player is going to activate that when he walks over to it. There we go. Perfect. And if you want lots of these, you just copy this cube like that. Uh, now let's see if we can count them. So we're going to put a number displayer connected to the counter. I'm just going to move that over in the top right hand corner. And one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And that is the code for creating a collectible object. Now, the good thing about this microchip is I can put that, I can take that microchip, I can ungroup it, uh, so I can take it off and then delete that wire and create a new collectible like this and put that microchip on it there we go and it works just the same you notice I didn't make that um, I didn't make it um, non-collidable so 
you try to step on it. This is why it's important to have an unclider ball. It's really hard to see that, that this is rotating either. So uh, let me just, so that you can see it is rotating. Let me put, um, let me put a line on it. There, that'll do. There we go. It is rotating. Look, it's just hard to see with see with the cone. So there we go. There we are, and it's added to the counter, just as these are. Okay, so that's simple. Right, let's make this a little bit more complicated. Um, sometimes um, people design the collectibles so they fly at the player. So let's uh, let's manipulate this uh, microchip and make it uh, do that. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm just going to color this microchip a different color, so we know which one uh, is the different mode. There we go. Right now, what we're going to do now is we've got um, we've got our zone which is collectible. Um, so now we want another zone bigger than that. Um, and we're going to put in another tag. Um, and we're going to say range. I mean, you can call these anything you like, whatever makes sense to you. Okay. Um, so this second one here, um, this is going to be looking for something called range and we're going to make it a lot bigger. So I'm going to make this 2.7, there we go, so that's a much bigger zone. Right, so if the player is in range then um, this will activate the tag so this tag uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use a follower and we need something for it to follow so we're going to put another tag in our player there are tags in the player that you can use but I'm going to use a, a, a new one now I'm going to call that collect Okay, so this tag, collect, at the moment set is feet. Um, I want it to go a bit higher up. I want it to go into his chest area, like that. And so this follower tag, I'll put the strength up and the tamping, and it's going to look for collect. And that's going into the power. So, um, so when we're in range, then it's going to be moving towards, and then that will set off this trigger zone, which will do all the rest of that we've already got in there. So let's try that. Ah, were we too close to it? We might have been too close to it. Let's just move away. Make sure. <laughs> right. There we go. Let's move up towards it. There we go. And it flew towards it. It's a bit slow. So we might need to speed that up a bit. Um, so let's speed it up a bit. Let's try 14. There we go. You can adjust the speed to however you want. So now, now we've got a collectible object that will fly towards you. And it can fly to whichever place you want. But you can just move, um, move your tag here to wherever you want the uh, the object to, to go to. So if you've got a backpack or something, that might be nice. It goes flying into the backpack. And you can use this tag. Um, so when this is activated, 
you can uh, so you, you can do special things with it um, with the player animations etc uh, and you can do animations here with the, the the range when it's following and all sorts of things so um, you can have it glowing for example so let's just put a little special effect in so we're going to make this object glow this is a little bit more difficult for passing the um, uh, the microchip along because um, glow on that keyframe that keyframe is dependent on this object but uh, once you've made your collectible object before you copy it there we go and it glowed and came up to me there we are rather nice and I can copy that now a few times so I've got my collectible object now there we go let's have a look see that working there we are lovely flying objects right now let's have a look about using this counter um, to create uh, open door so you have to collect a certain amount in order for the door to open um, let's put a door in um, and let's clear that and do it again door there's my media, media molecule door okay so at the moment we've got a trigger zone um so we need an and gate uh, i'm going to use a calculator and we're going to see if the current value of that counter is bigger than five and that's true then whoops then that so what we're saying is if if um, our counter is more than five and um, everything else about the door is also true then it'll open the door so let's see so if I go up to the door the door is not going to open so let's collect some there we are, I've collected five not enough Collected six, and now the door will open. So there we go. So that's how uh, these these door things work. There are media molecule um, portal door things that um, uh, that tr uh, try to you can use those. Um, but this is how to make your own, and um, it will be dependent on whatever you want to collect. And you can do the same here with keys and things like that. So if a key variable is higher than one because you've collected it it'll open the door it's exactly the same principle um so once you've we've understood how to do these sort of codes um this will open you up to all sorts of codes for things like adventure games rpgs that sort of thing collecting objects in order to open doors um collecting axes in order to chop down trees all of those sort of things uh uses exactly the same logic principles so there you go collectible objects i hope that was useful for you thank you for watching and I'll catch you in your dreams.